wh whatever you're open to is what you're going to be able to experience. So if you want to connect with beings like that, you can. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and I have a super special guest here today. Um, with me here is Ashley Lynn, and Ashley is a fellow YouTuber. Her channel is Adventures Across. Ashley is an Earth Mysteries explorer, a Lyran star seed, writer, photographer, plant enthusiast, artist, and mystic. And she <laughs> explores Earth out of the beautiful state of Wisconsin. And uh, Ashley's also prints a, um, was it a quarterly zine, which is also called Adventures Across. And in it, she writes about life experiences and channeled wisdom as well as practical ways to apply them to your life. Ashley cares deeply about living living paradise, taking care of the earth and sharing her art with the world. And I'm so excited to have her here today. Welcome, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks yeah, for inviting me. Yeah. And it feels like when I when I first kind of got to know you and, and, and found your channel, you just felt like such a kindred soul with the nature <laughs> and the art and the, <laughs> the star beings and all that. So um, and I guess what really brought home to me is like, I need to have Ashley here on the channel is because I received a question from a viewer, a comment in one of my videos. And um, so Katie says, I love your videos. There's been a thought that continues to enter my mind when I watch you and that there, that is that there are galactic beings who closely resemble some earthly animals, the lion, the reptile, the insects, the bird, et cetera. Those, um, those are some animal species who most have heard of their galactic counterparts. And Katie is wondering if I could make a video or message about other races who are similar to earth animals like the elephant or rabbit or dog or whatever, um, or videos comparing our animals to galactic races. And, when I, I saw your channel and saw some of the things that you've got on your channel about connecting with the galactics and you had this this really amazing piece of art that you did with a galactic uh, avian uh, called I think you called him Bill um, oh yeah Bill <laughs> yeah and and so I was like oh my gosh I have to have Ashley on the channel because I think I I have some connection with galactics but it's not as it, I, I guess so vibrant as is yours you seem to be so well connected with them and I thought why not you know have you on we can talk about this and and whatever else comes up <laughs> um so I'd love to hear a little bit more about your experiences collecting connecting with the galactics and especially those who have some kind of animal connection sure it's kind of funny because there's there's like a lot of ET species that are like they are some form of animal right like there's the yeah, water beings yeah. um and there's the like bill the blue avian and that that's kind of a funny story <laughs> yeah i'd love to hear it sure so it was a few years ago i was um i was living in an rv and it was off grid right next to the woods and i was just like so immersed in nature i was working on a farm so like 24 7 nature and i was really grounding myself in nature so I could go and explore these other realms because we need to be able to balance between the two, right? Yeah. You can't just go off here and be ungrounded here. You have to be. So I think that is part of the reason why I can connect so easily with <laughs> some of these beings. Mm. Um, so that summer, I really put out my intentions. I really wanted to reach out to other ET species and to just get to know them. I'm really into like learning their culture and learning like who they are, what they're all about. So <laughs> I, I was receiving answers to my questions through dreams, uh, through like lucid dreaming. And it was just <laughs> so profound. It was like every night I would have three in a row and I would wake up at like 333 or 222 or something like that in the morning. Um, and I would have to go outside because our bathroom for like living off grid was outside. So if I had to go to the bathroom and I went outside and I would look at the stars and I would just wonder and think about connecting with ETs <laughs> while I was out there. Then I would go to bed and have these dreams. And Bill came to me um, at a very strange <laughs> synchronistic time. <laughs> we were planting tomatoes on the farm and 
I was just at awe at tomato plants because they're so like on the surface, you just look at them, they're like, oh, they're just these scraggly plants. But if you work with a thousand of them in a day, you start to observe the finer details of these plants. And I was noticing that there were these hairs coming off of the stems and even on the tomatoes themselves. Mm -hmm. And they were gold. It looked like some divine gold color. It was really beautiful, um, like glittery. And I was wondering about them. So during a night um, <laughs> after this, I like realized this, I was in my bed and then I turned over, I woke up, I turned over and I saw Bill the Blue Avian. And mm. that's like the, the guy that I drew. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. He, he was like, he was blue. Um, very like fuzzy and feathery <laughs> like yeah. a bird and he had like it looked sort of tribal but um, like these designs on his face that were orange and yellow he had some fun hair um, like a beak type of a mouth um, but he was very humanoid he looked like uh, like his body was like a human but he had this very avian presence right mm -hmm. And blue avians are said to be like a higher, dimi higher dimensional beings, like eighth dimension or something. That's what I've heard. Um, and they are sort of discerning on who they come and visit. And it doesn't seem like they stick around for very long. So mm -hmm. if they come, it's like they come and then they go. <laughs> so I haven't really seen Bill since then. Um, but his message for me was <laughs> the tomatoes are upgrading us. Oh, wow. How cool. Yeah. How so cool is that? I was just like thinking about, or like I got that message and it, it really spoke to me because the farm I was working on was, uh, it was certified naturally grown. So it's basically organic without all of the paperwork. <laughs> sure. Um, because like when you get into that realm, it's a little bit, like paperwork heavy and it's really expensive to yeah. get certified organic so we were a um, certified naturally grown farm and we did everything naturally mm -hmm. uh, we put a lot of minerals and nutrients into the soil because the land in that part of wisconsin is kind of damaged from conventional farming sure so we did a lot of supplementation to fix the land because it used to be an old farm field yeah. Um, so we were putting in all of this love, all this energy, all this high vibrational, um, stuff yeah. into these tomatoes <laughs> and everything else we were growing. And it just hit me that what he means is this high vibrational food, right? The tomatoes are upgrading us. If we sure. are eating high vibrational food, we are going to be able to upgrade. Yeah. And we're going to be able to access some of these things a lot better, um, like connecting with ETs or connecting with the Fae and even connecting with ourselves and our, and our soul. So right. that's yeah. sort of the message that Bill the Blue Avian. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> awesome. That is yeah. really awesome. And oh my gosh, that opens up so many channels for potential discussion that I can think <laughs> of. Oh my gosh, where do we start? Um, you know, I think maybe like you're talking about this connection, right? That, that you are starting to have with the land there or, or working with it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that because I know you've worked on a number of farms and, and organic or natural farms and have this close connection with the land um, as, as do I, you know, and I've noticed that, you know, the more I work with the land, like, like my guidance really told me this summer, to work in this garden and this this garden is like it actually belongs to my neighbors but it was like really calling to me because we moved in about a little over a year ago to this house and the neighbors next door were just about to move out but I kept looking at their gardens like I really I really wanted to garden their garden for whatever reason right <laughs> well they moved out another set of neighbors moved in and they're disabled and they can't work I mean they, they really have a hard time doing that but but she's like 
you want to use my garden? You know, you, you need more room than what you have. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so there it was. And, but this garden and working with it has been the most healing thing and the most, and it feels like it's so reciprocal. It's like, because this was land that was really, 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 it was, it had been a gas station. It had been remediated and oh, wow. it was like freaking rape. <laughs> right. So working on this has been uh, just this amazing experience, but I'd love to hear more about your experiences working with the land and how the land and, 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 and the, 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 um, you know, whatever the galactic beings too, and how does that all work in there? Because these are from the stars, but we're on this planet. <laughs> how do you see that connection working? So, I mean, when you get down to it, right, everything is connected because we're all consciousness and we're all energy and energy isn't polar. There's no polarity to it. It just is. So if you can get into that state of being and think about that you know just think about it <laughs> and you go out and um experience that and i talk about this in one of my zines the earth encyclopedia zine this is my first one and the concept behind earth encyclopedia like if you go and do like all this uh research about galactic history and like our earth history with the ancient civilizations and all that it seems very apparent that earth was created obviously but it seems to me that it was created in like a very scientific and spiritual way right you know how people are into uh, genetics now in dna and everything that exists here sort of has that like that dna so the concept behind Earth Encyclopedia, and this cave also, when I was living on that, <laughs> on that farm, um, is that Earth is like an encyclopedia or a book. It's a living encyclopedia of the cosmos, of all of these other places around us that are different galaxies, different planets. There is something on Earth from each of these places, right? Mm -hmm. So um i i really see this when i am interacting in nature i'll be out and doing something and i'll have a certain thought and then i'll see a certain insect and it's like whoa <laughs> huh. that synchronicity is so deep i just don't know how this cannot be true yeah um yeah so like that happens with insects and um it's like mostly insects and plants for me but also the birds and Everything has a symbolic meaning if you are open to uh, seeing that, right? Yeah. So like every bird has a different symbolic meaning and every plant has a different symbolic meaning. And you can like get into this if you go and study like, um, like the pagan traditions, right? Because a lot of these earth worshiping traditions will uh, focus in on that. And it's all, it's like, so symbolic right yeah and and you find that it becomes like this dialogue don't you when you're mm -hmm. out there and it's like you realize that it's you're just talking to you all the time and specifically to you it's not just it's like you know and of course it goes out and you go out and it feels good and it's like you're in the nature but you start realizing it's literally talking to you and giving you the messages that you need it's like whoa <laughs> right um yeah so yeah I I suppose, yeah, like, and then keep to keep going on what you just said, like, um, where do these messages come from? Right. Yeah. So if you it's, it's all based upon your own inner truths and what you feel is true. <laughs> right. So for me, I just feel like it's because I do intentionally like reach out to ETs and um, like I talked to the Fae too, I intentionally like reach out to these beings and though I can't see them on this physical plane, you just know that they're there. You ask for, you ask a question and they will give you an answer through nature. So it is, it, it's just all connected, right? The, right? So a lot of these ETs can give you information through nature. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And and you're actually actively reaching out. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. And, and that's true. It's so true. It's like, if you ask, it's like, they're waiting for you to ask, right? Yes, they are. 
because they can't mess with our free will. We have to make a decision as sovereign beings. We need to make a decision if we want that or not. And they can't interfere with us. So if we make that decision and um, ask for it, they will give it to us. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and if we're in this place where we're confident and know that we're reaching out to benevolent beings, right? That's what's going to respond is the benevolent beings, right? Um, absolutely. So have you, what other galactics have you been in touch with? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, uh, it really just depends on like the day, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Um, but I like to go on, um, what do you want to call them? like earth mysteries excursions, right? And there's earth mysteries everywhere. Like there are sacred sites everywhere. And here in the Midwest, there's the effigy mounds, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, out in Egypt, there's the pyramids and you've got the big sacred sites, but there's little sacred sites everywhere. It's not just these big places, they're everywhere. So I've been exploring the sacred sites around my area here. Um, so there's these effigy mounds. You could go and visit those and you can connect with different beings there. But I've also gone down into caves. There's a lot of cave exploring to do um, mm-hmm. around here. And with the caves, uh, I feel really connected with inner earth civilizations. Sure. Wow. So you go down, there's this one cave in Minnesota we just went to. And I went down into the cave and it just I just felt like I was going on a journey into a different world Mm. like I was going off of the surface and I was going to go somewhere else and what ended up happening was uh we we, in the tour we got to the end of the line right and you could see the cave kept on going and the fort like the way that it looked looked like an infinity symbol or like um Ooh, like an eight wow. so I wow. was like how cool <laughs> I was like there's something down there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I went home and did like an astral travel journey just like sat in meditation and I like put my consciousness to where the the tour ended and then I just kept going yeah um, in yeah. a different plane and I was taken <laughs> I was taken through this cave and I came to like an aquamarine pool and it was lit up and Mm. I had to go in and wash myself in there before I could keep going. So I I did that. (laughs) I swam in the little pool and then I went onwards and I met a wasp being. Oh, wow. So he, he had a head of a wasp, right? And then he was wearing like a robe. So you couldn't see his body. And with insect beings, I usually like (laughs) <laughs> they are usually wearing a robe and I think it's because their bodies look kind of scary to us <laughs> so, so he was wearing a robe and he was a gatekeeper to something that was down there um were you afraid and, no <laughs> I was like oh this is so cool <laughs> but I guess I just what helps with with this if you are trying to connect with beings and see beings and these other uh forms of consciousness it helps to be open with them with the um physical ones right Mm -hmm. so if the if you're afraid of wasps you're not gonna like how are you gonna be able to connect with a wasp in the astral plane right you're gonna come in well you're you're gonna bring your fear with you yeah and that can trigger all sorts of stuff (laughs) right or they just won't connect with you at all if you have fear so yeah, I went, so I was with the gatekeeper and he let me look through a window of the cave. It was like, um, we were like up on a cliff and I looked out and it was just like a jungle mm-hmm. and there was a, like a sun type of a thing in the middle and it was orangish and red, like more mm-hmm. of a primal feeling thing. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> there was like, a castle <laughs> under the sun <laughs> I was like oh, okay so there's something down here cool. um so right really 
there's there, it's just like there's no limits on this it's um whatever you're open to is what you're going to be able to experience so if you want to connect with beings like that you can it takes a lot of practice <laughs> right, right, right. um and it's the reason why it takes a lot of practice and persistence and focus is because it is a skill and you need to sort of get better at it right. you can't just pick up a guitar and play guitar you have to practice and get better at it and that's how it is with this and it's like sort of like an initiation too um so yeah lately for me it's been a lot of insects but mm -hmm. I connect with insects a lot um in my you know my physical yeah. life when I'm out in the garden sure. Sure. there's lots of spiders lots of like yeah. there's a lot of wasps here like different colored ones and they're beautiful you just can't be scared of the things that are on this planet because it will prevent you from experiencing things in right. this you know right and if you watch these creatures like wasps I, I found at one point where if there was a wasp inside and it was buzzing around the window or something and it was just like you can you can have compassion for it and realize it just wants to get out it's not mm -hmm. after you you can actually put your finger in front of it and invite it to climb up and then very gently take it outside. I mean, the hard part is like, it doesn't want to leave, right? <laughs> when it's covered on your finger, but they're not after you, you know, they just want to try to be free. <laughs> um, you know, but if you're afraid, then I don't recommend it because it's going to feel <laughs> that. <laughs> and then you might get stung. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah. Or, I mean, you know, if you're near its nest or something, then it, it, you know, it, it's going to want to defend its nest and that's reasonable, <laughs> you know, not the time to go sticking your finger towards a wasp, but, mm -hmm. um, but feeling, and you know, with this compassionate feel for, okay, where's the animal at? What does it really want? You know, what are, what is its emotional state? And, and you can feel without being afraid you know, is, is this something that, you know, can I move closer? Can I, you know, how, how can I react in a way that's, that's going to be harmonious? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, how, so I love that you, I, I guess I'd love to hear your thoughts on connecting. Cause I think you touched on this in one of your last videos, your actual connection with the actual real physical nature and how that's influencing your spiritual development. Oh, sure. So, uh, what, let's see, when was that? <laughs> In 2015, 16, it was my last year of college. And this yeah. is when I really started getting into this. Um, I, had this position at my university where I was the garden manager. <laughs> and it was my job to create a garden to uh, produce a lot of food. And we donated it all to the food pantry. So I was like gung ho. I was like, I'm going to make this the best ever. And I got into permaculture that year and I learned about food forests. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much where it all started. It all started because I just wanted to grow food for people. Yeah. Um, so that year we planted a food forest and a bunch of other little thingies in the garden. It was like an acre plot. And um, I actually just went back to visit and it is like producing really good. Oh, nice. All the fruit trees are full of fruit and the garden is huge now. Um, so it all started with that. I didn't really have the spiritual intention for it because I was just looking for myself really. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> after that, um, uh, my partner and I, we decided to go and try living out on public land. And again, that's living in nature. We were living out of a tent. Um, we did that for 30 days. Um, and the purpose of that trip was 
so I could heal a bunch of my stuff from the past. Mm -hmm. And so I could connect more with my soul to really figure out what I'm here to do. Right. Yeah. So then that spiritual aspect got added into this nature thing. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up living off grid on the Oregon coast (laughs) and that was more nature. Right. Yeah. And the Oregon coast is rainy, rainy, rainy in the, um, in the winter. So I was really connecting with my, um, a lot of my sadness and a lot of my grief through the, the weather, right? Sure. You can feel um, certain emotions with the different weather. Yeah. So if it's like a stormy day, maybe you're going to feel a little bit stormy and, and it's okay. You just have to let that come up and, you know, wash away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my journey is very immersed in nature. I spend most of my time outside with, with nature, the forest, depending on where I am, because I, I was down in Sedona, Arizona for a little bit too. And I was out in nature all the time. <laughs> we lived on public land down there for about 30 days before we found somewhere else to live. Um, but it's like, through this it's just strange because nature gives you this space where you can there's no conditions nature doesn't give a crap about anything it just wants to be with you the planet Mm -hmm. just wants to be with you so if you just sit with that it's holding space for us so it can help us grow spiritually and help us connect more with our soul because if we're giving ourselves that space too, so much can just come out and blossom. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) And, and for you, you're such a creative person. Like one of the ways it blossoms is through your art and through your writing. Right. Um, Can you share a little bit? about that and maybe how these creative pursuits also go in the mix to help you to expand (laughs) spiritually yeah so one of my well I have a lot of things I do I guess (laughs) I can't help it though it's just who I am um one of the things I do is nature photography so when I uh in outside or it, it really depends if I'm going to go on a trip or if I'm going to go on a hike I will always have my camera with me I have a DSLR camera and it comes with me everywhere <laughs> so I will take all these photos of nature um, of like it's specifically plants and flowers right because those are like the things that really get me um, and well, flowers are just so beautiful because they're so colorful and they're so different. Um, so we're each like a flower, I suppose, in that way. Um, so in my zines, I take, I mean, we go to a lot of places. So I have a lot of photography in here of flowers and each place has a different vibration right so like this is in Ireland this is in a place called Fairy Glen (laughs) so there's like fairy energy in the picture so I can capture different energies and essences through my photos and I put them into my creative works like my zines um, because then I can give that gift to others they can see a picture and maybe they don't understand like the depth of it but just by like looking at a a photo can change you and it can if you allow it to if you that's your intention with it so yeah like this is in Sedona I'd like to travel to sacred sites so a lot of my Mm -hmm. stuff is infused with that um there's just like a vibration that plants hold everything is frequency and everything is vibration right yeah um so everything is unique in its own expression and you can connect with these plants and nature in that way. So yeah, my creative pursuits, <laughs> it's literally like all about that. You just, I just, um, and I don't know how to even explain it. It's just 
it's natural for me. I, I can't do it any other way. I just intuitively know what I need to do. And it does sometimes it just makes no sense. Like the first few years of this journey, I was like, what am I doing all this for? I just right. like, felt these like impulse. They're not like impulses. It's like um, inspired passion or it's just like this urge to take this inspired action. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So I just do it. And now I'm realizing that a lot of the stuff that I was doing in the beginning was preparing me for this moment right here and now. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to do as much work for this next thing that I'm going to be doing because I already did it all. Yeah. So like this whole path, if you're into like being this creative person, you just don't, you're not going to know the whole story. You probably will know 10% of the story. If you keep following that uh, fire within, you're going to realize, whoa, this is, this is stranger than fiction, man. <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> right. And you're literally, your life becomes a work of art, right? Yes. Because, like so often when you start a piece of art, you might have an idea of what you're doing, but it. It, it has its own life and it directs you as much as you're directing it. And, and what I'm finding is I, I'm experiencing the same thing. It's like these kind of passionate impulses, right? Even creating this channel was one. It's like creative channels. Like, okay. <laughs> I was afraid of my own voice. I didn't want to, you know, anybody seeing me. I mean, this was completely out of my comfort zone, but it was like, make this channel. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's been amazing um and and so many things it's like and and things in different parts of life right you do this do that whatever these creative impulses and then after a while you start to see how they're weaving together and coming well becoming your amazing life or whatever it is right <laughs> um and and I think that that is a vibration right and it vibrates out and others can feel it and it affects probably to the end of the universe, right? Yeah. <laughs> you connect with the galactics, you know, they're going to feel it. <laughs> oh yeah. They're, yeah. I mean, they're always jazzed when we're following our, our highest, yeah. um, when we're following our dreams and we follow our heart, they are so thrilled about that because if we are in that space and we're connected and we're aligned, mm-hmm. what are we doing? Oh, we're ushering in new, new earth. Right? That's exactly what we're doing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So if you just courageously show up, I mean, being courageous, it's sure it's um, having the balls to go and do something, but it's also acknowledging that there is fear and doing it anyway. Yes. So, so important. So important because that fear is probably going to be there either way. And mm-hmm. you can either, you know, follow the fear or you can be like, okay, there's this fear and we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Wow, I love that. Well, Ashley, I would I think we could probably sit here and have this conversation for like eight hours. <laughs> I know I could seriously I could talk for days and I would still be smiling afterwards. So I know, me too. <laughs> but it's been such a pleasure having you on. Where can people find you? Oh, so I'm on Instagram, Adventures Across. My YouTube channel is Adventures Across. I have a website, it's also adventuresacross.com. And I'm also experimenting with Odyssey, which is, uh, it's like YouTube, but it's backed by blockchain technology and oh. uh, it uses cryptocurrencies. So I really? am, ex- yeah, it's so cool. Like go check okay. it out. But I'll have to check that out too. It's cool. It's, um, it's like, you can't censor it. It's, you know, so. There we go. Okay. I will definitely check that out. Yeah. So you can find <laughs> me in all those places. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So, um, Ashley, thank you so, so much. I'm going to put links below. So if anybody wants to connect with Ashley, it should be easy enough to go down to the description and hit those links and find her online. And um, just, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Ona. This was really fun. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. All right. Bye-bye. And uh, to all you viewers, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we, I th- know we both love you and um, we'll just catch you again soon. Remember you were born to be free. <laughs>